Welcome back to that Fight Card Podcast with the latest and most in-depth news in the MMA community, hosted by Spider. Hello, everybody. This is Spider coming to you once again from San Antonio, Texas. This is the Fight Card Podcast, and we are inside the House of Jiu-Jitsu Academy, as always. Uh, my guest today is actually an instructor here. I have David Longoria on the studio. David, man, how are you, bro? Good morning, good morning. Thank you. Thank you for and having me. Doing well. Yes, sir. And it is morning, bro, and that's important because you actually teach here in the mornings, correct? Yeah. Uh, 540 every morning. I pull up, uh, open the house up. I tell the building, the building good morning and uh, open for 6 a.m. class. And how long does the class usually last? Uh, one hour, and then we have a little 30-minute break, and then we pick up uh, our next class at 7.30. Now, the fact that it's back-to-back, -back, can the same student come in and do both classes? Of course, yeah, you come in, you got unlimited access. As long as the door is open and uh, the mats aren't, not, uh, you know, aren't occupied, you're not in that class, you get you know, green light on bags or get you some mat space, you know. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Now, me and you, we go way back, bro. Mm -hmm. I mean, back in the day, I mean, I started training with Mike Rangel mm -hmm. back in 2002, and you yourself started training with uh, Texas Powerhouse. I did, yeah. Uh, around what time was that? What year? Yeah, I think that was, uh, I was thinking yesterday, and I, I believe it was right after my, my 30th birthday, uh, and it was 05, 05, yeah, 2005, I, I, and I was, I was lucky, you know, there wasn't much to pick from, you know, uh, and... Uh, powerhouse was about three minutes away from where I was at at the time and so you know I got lucky and walked into a good school yeah before you started training were you in martial arts no 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 not at all uh shoot man I played basketball to stay in shape honestly I didn't uh and and I guess it just kind of came from uh I was tired of saying that I could do something like that you know you watch it on the tv you go rent the, you go to blockbuster and you rent you know UFC two and three and you know, uh, man, you know, I, I could do that. I could do that. I was tired of saying that. And, you know, finally did. Yeah, yeah. I didn't want to, I, I didn't have any expectations of myself of fighting or anything, but I did want to at least put myself in, in that type of environment, that fire, you know. And Powerhouse, Powerhouse had that, you know. No, yeah, definitely. I mean, they were one of the schools uh, early in the day, man, that had guys that were freaking rocking, dude. I mean, oh, yeah. they had a lot of studs. I mean, they didn't have me in there, but, you know, everybody <laughs> else was a stud. Uh -huh. but, um, but, yeah, man, I mean, Jamie Miller, of course, you know, everybody in San Antonio knows who he is. I mean, he's actually developed a couple of black belts, you know, um, one of his students right down the road, man, actually, Arguello, he's out there. Yeah, oh, oh, Gaito. There you go, uh -huh. man. And now, yourself, man, when you started training, like you said, you were at 30 years of age? I was 30. I was already, uh-huh, a viejito. On my way to being an old man, but, you know. You could, you, yeah, put it up to the young guys, huh? uh -huh, yeah. make them work. Uh -huh. Now, when you started training, because I started training, I was going on 24, 25, mm. and this was in 02. But um, even then, I had, like, high school students that were in you know, football and, I mean, all these meanheads, man, and I kept up with them, man. I mean, how did you feel going in? Uh, um, I, you know, kind of... I just, I was an open book. I was ready for whatever. And uh, they put me with, uh, I believe his name was Jake. Uh, I was working EMS at the time. And so I would have two days off between shifts. And so uh, I would occupy my, and I was, uh, I like to drink. And so at that time I was abstaining from alcohol and I wasn't, you know, uh, so that was giving me something to do. Keep me, keep me busy on my days off. You know, mm -hmm. I, I was in the same boat um, when I started training. I mean, I, I literally, I was like at, man, like 240, man. I was a big dude, man. It was just, you know, alcohol, dude. I used to mm -hmm. drink a lot. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, when I started working out, I started getting in shape. I mean, all that stuff came off, man. I started mm -hmm. eating better, stopped drinking. So uh, it makes a difference, man, because it, um, it took a positive influence, you know, mentally and then physically, of course. Mm -hmm. now, and, and good for the wallet, you know. Oh, yeah, uh -huh. that too. Yeah, yeah. That too. You see, and that's one of the things too, man. Because what are the the rates that people can look at coming in here? Uh, for unlimited, I mean, I'd hate to speak out of turn, but I, I, I one sixty. So you come in, uh, you know, you get you a gi, come in, get some some gear, 
Uh, we got gear and geese here, so uh, you don't have to go far for rash cars or anything like that. Done for sure. Yeah. And like you said, it's an open door as long as the oh, yeah. mats available. We have a we have a, a all affiliation policy. Actually, we don't, you know, so anybody from anywhere passing through, coming to, about to leave, it doesn't matter. You know, come on through, and we'd love to have you. Sure. And I mean, I've been by here on Sundays, and mm, I mean, yeah. open mat, dude, so you definitely get a lot of traffic. It, it's, uh, yeah, it's huge. Our open mats are pretty big. I think <clears throat> at least once a month we we uh, cook out back hot dogs. Mark, yeah, the the celebrity, Mark. Oh, yeah, yeah there you yeah, go. He's, uh, he's back there, uh-huh, he's back there cooking, so. Yeah, I start calling him the chef. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. Man, well, those are the days I need to start coming, bro, because I like to eat, man. I had no idea that was going on. Yeah, well, we start at 11. Don't show up at 12.30. Uh -huh. oh, definitely. Yeah, I'll, people always ask me, what do you want to bring to the uh, barbecue? I say, man, a date, man. <laughs> that or an extra plate, you know, because I got to eat. Hey, how long between when you started uh, when you started in 03 to where you were teaching over at uh, Chips? From the time, I had already been training, I want to say four years. Four years. Now, I was a purple belt under Mike Rangel, who at the time wasn't in the Philly, uh, he wasn't ranked. I mean, it was through his system in Valetudo. Okay. But um, we did gi, no gi, you know, and it's, um, for me, confirmation was basically being able to go to seminars and actually have a le legitimate uh, black belts tell me, like, yeah, man, come get your rank, you know, we'll test you for purple. I mean, I was able to train under a couple of uh, top-level Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu guys uh, through seminars and and privates, man. But I mean, but my whole thing for leaving, you know, Mike Rangel. I mean, I took a break because I was working at the post office and it was scheduling was awful. But when I did have time, I started teaching mornings. That's the only time I had. And getting ranked was my priority, man. I wanted to go under somebody and just get ranked and get, you know, get legit. And go from there, but I mean, I was teaching, and I was an affiliate of Cross and Gracie uh, Jiu Jitsu uh, mm -hmm. team, so that that was that that was a, you know, it was perfect for me, man. I liked it, I enjoyed yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. I didn't have much of a. I, we had, we had Miller, and then we had uh, uh, every so often we would get a visit from Kenny Kenny McClure, who's a black belt under Machado, I believe. Uh, we would go and visit Luter and, and, and McClure up in Dallas. Uh, yeah. No, for sure, man. And I know, I mean, and I, you know, I was in the middle of everything. I mean, San Antonio, like 2004, 2005, that's when Tama got mm -hmm. big. Mm -hmm. So the whole amateur mixed martial arts blew up. Mm -hmm. I mean, we had guys like stuff, you know, as far as like the powerhouse uh, team, uh, powerhouse Power team, was no, it? No, 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 not power no, no, team. No. Yeah. no, no, not power team. Texas no, no, powerhouse. But I'm saying powerhouse, and then they have power team, of course, yeah, that started yeah, after, yeah. which uh -huh. was a big conflict. That was, I, uh, uh -huh. yeah. I think that was all over. Um, that was all, all over uh, Texas MMA at the time. Oh, the the forum, really? dude. Like okay. everybody was going crazy with that. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, Miller of course, Jamie was not. He no, wasn't yeah. pleased. Uh -huh. Yeah, man, and I mean, when it happened, yeah, man, it was awkward, you know, but that was their team name in Brazil. Uh, oh, really? They were coming from, but yeah, man, I mean, you had uh, Angel Soto, who's still around, he had his team, oh, yeah. and I mean, there was a couple others, man, locally, you know, I mean, all over the, the state, I mean, they blew up. Now, as far as jiu-jitsu, man, I mean, you did compete early on? Oh, yeah, yeah, uh, here and there, not, man, this is, uh, uh, so we got a competition coming up, uh, and it's been you since '08, maybe since I, uh, um, you know, slap bump figured it out. You know what I mean? It's it's been a it's been a while. So I got some of those nerves, and then I also, um, you know, you also don't want to go out there and shit the bed. You know what I mean? Yeah. You also want to go out there and you know um, show. And, and, no, and, for sure, man. And this is my thing with competition, bro. Like. I, I see why. Personally, I mean, I, t I would like to test myself every day in the gym. I mean, of mm -hmm. course, getting people in, you know, rolling with your instructor, of course, Jacob, you know, who's a black belt. But for competitions, for me, yeah, man, you got to be there mentally and physically because you're on the mat and you got like a hundred eyes looking at you, man. Yeah, sure. So, I mean, thinking about it now, I mean, what are you doing to kind of clear your, your mind, getting ready for that? Uh, Just, man, um... Staying with my routine, staying, 
just keeping my head in the game, keeping it clear, not psyching myself out. I know, I know it in, in, you know, some competitions, man, I, 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 I look great. And then other competitions, like, damn it, boy, I shit the bed on that one. You know what I mean? I gassed or I, I did I wasn't listening to my corner or something, something, you know. Uh, but, and that's on me. That's not on, you know, that's on. So that, I think I, I kind of, I want my, I want my revenge. You know what I mean? I want right. my payback. I'm, uh, I don't think I ended on, on, a, on a good note competitively. And so I, I'm looking to get that back. Redemption, bro. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, going back to what, what competition is that going to be? Uh, it's going to be a, 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 it's a super fight November 8th. Oh, okay. And, uh, I, I don't know my opponent. I know he's a black belt and from the, uh, from the, the eyes that I get, you know, he's, he's good, you know, so uh, I'm looking forward to it. And looking this forward is, to it. This is going to be gi or no gi? It's going to be no gi. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So I'm a gi guy. I, I enjoy the gi because it's. I'm an old man, and that's that's okay. <laughs> you want to hold uh, on to stuff, but we're gonna go ahead and yeah, I like to hold on to stuff, slow it down. But um, yeah, so uh, Professor Jake offered it to me. Uh, he said, "What do you think?" Um, actually, I no, I went to him. It's uh, I've been kind of getting. Uh, I wanted to do. I wanted to do. Um, I think Grappling Industries in August. I right. think there was a 2029 20 show, and uh, they canceled that show, postponed it, and then something else came up, and uh, uh, I was ready for that Grappling industry. Something else came up, and uh, uh, that fell through. And then uh, you know you set these little goals, uh, and so just this just seemed like a, a perfect opportunity. Okay, yes, maybe no, no, not maybe. Yes, you know. And so I asked Professor, uh, Professor Jacob if, uh, say, hey, man, I don't want to sit and watch everybody else, you know, go out there and compete. Let me, because uh, we got a few a few guys competing on that card. No, and, and this is, it's going to be for the Fury card, isn't it? Uh, the one that they host, or I'm going to look into that, man, because I definitely want to find out. Um, and then, uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm sidetracked on this. So I, I, I'm not too sure how this works, but I'm working with Jacob now. You know what I mean? Uh, we are we are under uh, Professor Yarrington. Right. Uh, yeah, Professor Yarrington is like the emperor, right? And and then Jake here is uh, the shogun of this compound, or right. however you see it. Uh, but I am working directly under uh, Professor Jacob. I just don't know how. Uh, see, my professor, I do. I don't. That's yeah. I don't know. Just know you're competing. I'm just, <laughs> hey man, I'm, I'm I'm here and he 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 strangles me, teaches me. I, I, he's familiar with my game, what I'm doing, where I'm at, you know. So uh, it's good to have him. And uh, little uh, side note, uh, I was his first instructor. I was Jacob's first. Oh wow! Instructor, yeah. I was teaching some guys in a, in my garage. Uh, when was that? In, I want to say 2010 or so, something like that. Oh, wow, okay. And uh, he was helping a neighbor move in. And uh, he's like, hey, man, uh, you know, he was just interested. He's like, I just got out of school. I think he was kind of looking for something to do. And uh, uh, he started off there in that garage with me, you know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it was interesting. And now. Uh, the tides have turned, man. Mm-hmm, the tides have turned. You know, he's he's leaning on me. Um I, well, I was out in uh, uh, I was out in West Texas working, and when I was coming home every uh, 21 days, I would stay for 10 days, and so talk to Jay, or talk to Professor Jason, talk to Jacob, and it's hey yeah man, uh, when you come in, you know just just help out wherever you can, and and then Jake had asked me hey can you help me with MMA just you know, yeah. and so I'm kind of like an assistant coach here I guess right. you know. Uh, and then I made the the move back full time. Right. You know, I was like, you know, all right, let me let me go home and uh, get my black belt. You know, tired of it, bro. I was I was a twelve year blue belt man. Twelve year blue belt, and that's not because how many stripes that I take? Four stripes. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Yeah, man. So, and it, it's uh, it's motivating. I said, I tell you that it's motivating. It's embarrassing, um, but it is motivating. Uh, all the guys that I started off with all have black belts. You know. Uh, I'm the same to, boat. I used to choke out Jason Arrington, you know. I used to call him Conan. You know, 
choke him and he'd, you know, freak out. He was, he was uh, I, I always knew he would amount to something. He was just super motivated to, uh, to get better, you yeah. know. I mean, I, I squeezed his neck I don't know how many times, you know, but that shit, that shit stopped pretty quick too. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he was, uh, <laughs> he spent a lot of time with Jamie and, uh, and me, I'm just inconsistent, and uh, you know, I'm um, wandering in and out, and then I wander in, and holy shit, man, Jay got, like, really good, I mean, yeah, yeah. really good, uh, and I want to, I don't even, I can't even quantify as far as, uh, like, but man, he just got really good, uh, then he was teaching for Jamie in the mornings, I think that's when I came back, or was kind of like, right. one of the times I was coming back, so... Uh, that wow, you know, um, he was a purple belt at that time. Yeah, I remember that, man. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You see, and the thing with uh, Jason Yarrington, man. I mean, myself, like I was there covering a few grappling mm-hmm. events, and I mean, seeing him, he was technical, man. I mean, mm-hmm. this is like years later when he was a black belt, but just watching the way he would move his opponent or the certain hooks, and I would notice him, and I'm thinking, man, this is like a real technical fight, yeah, yeah. and. It was, it was always fun to watch, man, because the guy is good, man. Yeah, he speaks calculus. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, oh, oh, yeah. Like, he going through some, running through a, a technique or some ideas, you're like, whoa. This dude's dude, he's, he's way like, different than I am. Yeah. Like, college-level calculus, man. I'm still uh, FOM, dude. Right. Fundamentals, bro. <laughs> right. I'm still learning. What does this mean? What does this symbol mean? That's right. Yeah. No, yeah. And like I said, man, I mean, obviously, that rubbed yeah. off, man, because even, I mean, Jacob himself, man, I mean, we were actually in Beville. This was for the uh, Texas Clash Bash. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I had told you, man, I mean, during the whole fight, there was a few coaches, a few corners that I was like, man, they were coaching really well. And Jacob was one of them, man. And I'm not just saying that because he owns this place, but, I mean, he was very technical, and he was actually talking to his fighters, and I'm thinking, man, that's pretty. That's what coaching is. Yeah. Everybody else is yelling, punch, punch, mm-hmm. and he's on his back, you know, like, Okay. It doesn't make sense. Yeah, yeah, they're, yeah, they're yelling for him to get out, but how, yeah. you know? Uh-huh. Break it down. Right. Um, yeah, yeah, that's a bright dude. You know, Jake is, and I like the way he breaks things down. Um, we have a lot of uh, uh, in common as far as, you know, um, the optics, of, you know, looking at something. and. Uh, so, uh, uh, but yeah, so I've been home since, shoot. I don't know, man. I think uh, I think I came home in October or something like that. Um, uh, Running Casing out there in West Texas for a Texas Casing. Can I shout out to Texas Casing? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, so I came home and and uh, just I was gonna make money here. You know, we're gonna, I was gonna figure it out and I'm figuring it out. So now I'm teaching here, back in the fold full time. Um, so it's nice to be, it's nice to be on the mats. Um, I wish I would have followed my advice. I would, if, if there's any advice I could give myself at 30, starting this journey, it pro it would be to stay on the mats, yeah. stay on the mats, whatever problem, whatever issue or distraction there is going on. Uh, the answer is to, uh, get on the mats. I don't care what discipline or what, who just get on the mats you know for sure man you know, i mean we do yoga here fridays fridays at seven we do yoga here so okay what mats it is yeah. just get on them you know mm-hmm. and obviously i mean for me the the biggest thing was was going back i was gone i'd be gone four months and i'd go back and because you're embarrassed man it's your ego and you're thinking man i'm gonna get smashed but i mean you gotta look past that i mean the gym the mentality you need to have is like you know what learn here learn from your mistakes here that way, when you're out there, you you know what not to do, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now, how how do you deal with that, man? I mean, for you personally, like I mean, obviously you roll with other purple belts and, and brown belts and black belts. Sure. I mean, when they when they dominate, I mean, how, how do you think about it? So every time when I would uh, when the prodigal son would make his way back to the right, uh, I would I would spend probably my first mat few times on the mats, only being in horrible spots. Uh, if if uh, I would just give them, I would take a, a, a sloppy shot or leave something hanging around just to get in deep water right away. I want to get this shit over with. I don't want to. I want to, you know, get my defenses, everything on, uh, everything, you know, bolted down and looking right and greased up. I want my mind to be. 
I want that glue to be warm, you know, uh, and then I go from there. Anytime I teach uh, somebody from ground zero, <clears throat> I teach them uh, on their back side control. Yeah. Uh, and then where we're going from there. Uh, so I try to, you know, uh, yeah, I try to, I try to be in the worst spots possible. Work your way out. Work my way from there. Now, let me ask you, bro, uh, you said you had never done any other martial arts. I mean, you no, played basketball before. Sure Something like this, I mean, it's obviously for everybody, right? I mean, you would say? Uh, yeah, and if, and if uh, jiu-jitsu isn't, then, then maybe nogi is, you know, and if nogi isn't, maybe Thai boxing is. Or maybe yoga. MMA, yoga, Heck, man, there's always know? something. Uh, we got a, my, one of my early birds that comes in, uh, he's a capoeira practitioner, a capoeirista is how he says it, you know, and uh, so, man, yeah. Uh, I'm not going to knock anything. I tried uh, sp uh, boxing, like spar boxing, like boxing, boxing, Queensbury with uh, uh, Jake about a month ago, a couple of months ago. I have, no, I don't have, I can't box. I can, I can look like I tie box. I can look like I, I, I got some tie skills, but man, all hands, just hands. Yeah. Uh, it's a different was, animal, yeah, man. He was eating me up. Yeah. You see, and that's one of the things, and uh, none of before we had even um there's like weeks back man we had talked about it and we had talked about cross training back when we first started how a lot of instructors back then were like no you can't you can't train here you can't you know for me personally mike was like man he didn't care uh -huh. so i was able to go to judo i was able to go to boxing mm -hmm. and i mean one thing i realized right away is that i sucked at everything mm -hmm. but you mm -hmm. know i was learning and i was looking at different perspectives i mean one of the things with boxing i'd go to boxing gyms and they would always yell at me, man, because my, my foot stance. They were yeah. like, man, you got to stand this way. You gotta, And I'm thinking, dude, that's that's an easy for takedown, you know? Like, So it was hard, man, because at that time, I mean, other than our instructors, obviously, I mean, there was no real MMA, nobody to really, like, put everything together and say, look, this is what works from judo, this is what works. Because obviously, I mean, when you go training somewhere, you can learn under somebody, but you're always going to go back to what works for you. Sure. Now, you, like you are saying with boxing, I mean, have you ever boxed? No, no. I thought I could. I thought I could just because you know you, you the spar bag. with these youngsters. Yeah, with these youngsters, you kick the bag. You can, you know, you can spar and uh, you know MMA sparring is just not and, and, and hands and feet sparring is just not boxing, man. It's not. It's yeah, they're very different. And one thing I did, not one thing. One of the things that I, I loved about Texas Powerhouse is that. You couldn't just show up, and, and uh, I like the way you said that, that you worked there. You couldn't just show up and, uh, uh, hey, I'm here to take MMA class. No, you had to, like, earn your way to MMA class. Uh, you had to be in a gi. You, you, I, uh, man, Miller had, you know, you had to be in a gi, like, Close. three three times a week or something like that. You had to be in a, a no-gi class a couple times a week, and you had to be taking Thai boxing. So, the, and, and you know. I guess he, I mean, he had the foresight that this is all one thing. We cannot, you know, and we were wrestling heavy. We were, uh, we were really heavy on the wrestling uh, it, in that jujitsu, you know. So whenever we were a top school, we liked to be on top. We weren't much of a bottom. Full guard and all that other no, stuff. No, no, no. You, you might get run off, you know. <laughs> <laughs> no, not really. I, but I know that it was not a preferred method of uh, engaging. No, for sure, man. You see, and, and that's kind of interesting because, like I was saying, like, everybody teaches their own. I mean, you go to different schools, and some guys, you know, they start from the guard. Other guys, they start from, from the standing position. I mean, there's so many different ways that people teach, mm -hmm. you know, and that's one of the things I always tell people. I mean, whenever they ask me, like, oh, man, what's a good school here in San Antonio? I always ask them what they're looking for because if they're like, hey, I just want to work out, or, you know, there's different places, man, but I always give them – I give them names, and I'm like, man, go check out this place. It's in your area. You know, there's this other school. And because not everything works for everybody, man. When I first started training with Mike Rangel, I mean, I got – and I got butchered, man. I mean, my first month, I went, like, yeah. once a week because I was in pain. You know, mm -hmm. it was brutal. Mm -hmm. But um, the new guys that would start coming in, like, uh, I started kind of like, hey, man, let's roll. You know, mm -hmm. let's – because I didn't want them to get run off, man, because a lot of people never came back, bro. Right, right. Yeah, and, and that's one of the things. It's like I don't. It's not. I'm not saying baby these guys or you know, but definitely you know what? Let them come in and if they've never rolled, they, yeah, they don't yeah, even know what a guard is. Yeah, like work know, with these people. Uh -huh. Right. They don't know their uh, uh, shoulders not supposed to go that way. You know. Exactly, right, bro. Right. Or how where they're in danger at or yeah. 
You see, and when somebody like that comes, I mean, do you see that? I mean, if you told somebody to get in guard, do you catch yourself thinking, okay, he doesn't know what that is? Uh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> I, 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 um, uh, yeah, you can, you can pretty much spot that a mile away, you know, uh, as far as who's new and who's from somewhere else or, you know, like who's got some experience. Uh, yeah, you can, you can see who's, you can see who the brand new, brand new green guy is. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, uh, I, I, I enjoy teaching, you know, one kind a conversation that I had, uh, with, uh, uh, my professor, Jason. Uh, Professor Yarrington and and with Professor Bastos out there in, in Midland, um, I was I was going to his gym. There was a couple of gyms I was going to out there while I was oil uh, field, right? Uh, in the oil yeah. field, and uh, he his is the one I ended up visiting primarily. Um, and they both told me the same thing. They did their best. They had their most. They they the you know like uh, uh, most success in right. competition when they were teaching. Oh, man, that really, like that really put in perspective, uh, like, oh, okay, yeah, it's basics, man. Yeah. It's basics is what it is, you know, it's fundamentals. And uh, so so teaching, I think, is always going to be a part of my journey. I, it's going to be a part of my, you know, dietary curriculum, however you want to put that, you know. Oh, for sure, mm-hmm. man, and, and it's important you, that you said that because – it's just like with MMA or any other sport, like just because you're a good fighter, a good, good competitor, it doesn't mean you're a good instructor. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's a lot when it comes to actually teaching, even if um, majority of the schools, normally they start you off with the kids class and you learn how to do that. And you, mm-hmm. you the same thing, you learn, work your way up. Mm-hmm. Now, working with students and haven't been teaching, have, have you ever been in a situation where you're trying to break something down? You know the curriculum, and you catch something that you never notice. Uh, yes, and that's a that's a reason why. Hey, let's go. All right, side control. You know, and uh, taking your time through all these. <clears throat> there's a lot of nuance and things that we just stroll on by every day. Just don't give it a second. You know, one thing that I really enjoy about <clears throat> uh, Professor Jacobs' classes is that you know it's like, oh man, I didn't see that. That was that's been there this whole time. Yeah. I right in front of you, literally. Right in front of me, yeah. yeah. Uh, so, so it's, um, man, I'm, I'm learning a, a ton here, you know, learning a ton here. And uh, I'm grateful to be able to, to give back and be able to give back to Jake, you know. Um, he went off, did bigger and better things, and, I mean, look at him, you know. He, oh, yeah, I man, this place uh, is huge. That he found out that, uh, I found out that, you know, Jake is with Jason, and I was like, wow, man, that's beautiful. And he was working with Odie for a little while. Right. I know that. Uh, oh, yeah. So, um, so yeah, man, it's cool. Just, you know, it's a small world, and then it's it full circle, man. Yeah. yeah. That's true, man, because, it, I mean, here in San Antonio, man, everybody's trained with everybody. Mm-hmm. I mean, whether they change schools or they just open a new, a new mm-hmm. place or a new academy. Mm-hmm. But for me, man, it, I, I like it, man, because it's growth. You know, there's uh, schools that I've talked to, and I won't quote them or say their name only because I didn't get permission. But, I mean, there was one instructor, and I had talked to, and I had told him, I said, man, you know, are you okay with the school being this close to yours? Man, he says, man, there could be schools all down the street. He said, that's good. He said, I I love jiu-jitsu. I want it to grow. He said, because that guy's Brazilian jiu-jitsu, that guy's Brazilian jiu-jitsu, but they're not my jujitsu and it struck a chord because i was like man that's true man nobody's the same everybody has their their way of teaching their method and uh, their curriculum man now let me ask you bro as far as like you said the class is here i mean like i said we are inside the uh, hatsu jujitsu the address is 823 south laredo uh, 78204 zip code and the website triple w h o j s a t x dot com and of course, if they want to get a hold of uh, the schedule, they can get online. Yeah. I mean, is there like a no, um, first day trial? Like, if they want to come yes, check it out? Is. Yeah, come on in. Uh, be greeted. We'll give you a little tour and get you on the mask. Come with, uh, you know, some water, some shorts. Uh, and if you got gear, bring whatever you got. You know, we get, we get visitors from other gyms all the time. So, uh, yeah, bring whatever you got. Oh, for sure, man. I mean, I'm going to cut this short, man, but I am going to be uh, catching up on this, man, bringing okay. you in some more. Okay. Now, David Longoria, man, thank you, bro, yeah, thank for doing you, this. Man. Thank you for having me, man. And next time, bring some tacos, please. <laughs> I'm hungry. Yeah. Uh, no, man, but I do thank you. Yeah, for real. And everybody out there, man, this is Spida. 
you're listening thing to the Fight Card Podcast. Follow up, check out our YouTube, our Facebook page, and group. Until next time, follow up.